The sleek private jet banked gracefully over the glittering expanse of the Caribbean Sea, the sun's golden rays glinting off its polished fuselage. Inside, Mark Sinclair gripped the armrests, his knuckles whitening as he stared out the window at the approaching island paradise. His stomach churned with a mixture of anticipation and unease. Next to him, Lucy, his wife of eight years, gazed serenely out the window, her delicate features bathed in the warm light. Mark studied her profile, the familiar curves and contours that he had come to know so well. Yet in this moment, a nagging sensation of uncertainty crept into the back of his mind. The jet touched down on the private tarmac, and as the engines whined to a halt, Mark took a deep, steadying breath. This was it. Their first foray into the world of William Fellows, the enigmatic and impossibly wealthy client whose company they had been retained to work with. As they disembarked, a contingent of staff greeted them, their crisp uniforms and deferential demeanor only heightening the sense of wealth and privilege that permeated the island. Mark felt a palpable shift in the atmosphere, a subtle but undeniable transition from the familiar confines of their everyday lives to something altogether more rarefied. Following the staff, Mark and Lucy were ushered into a sleek chauffeured limousine that wound its way through the lush tropical landscape, the azure waters of the private beach growing closer with each passing mile. Mark's mind raced, his thoughts a jumbled mix of anticipation, unease, and a nagging feeling that he was stepping into a world he could never truly belong to. The limousine pulled up to a sprawling, whitewashed villa, its modern lines and vast expanse of glass reflecting the brilliant Caribbean sun. As they stepped out, a tall, impeccably dressed man strode towards them, his confident gait and warm smile instantly disarming. Mark, Lucy, welcome to my little slice of paradise. William Fellows said, his deep baritone voice laced with a hint of amusement. I'm so glad you could join me for the weekend. Mark extended his hand, his grip firm but not overly aggressive. Thank you for having us, Mr. Fellows. It's an honour to be here. Please, call me William, the older man replied, his blue eyes sparkling with a subtle intensity that sent a shiver down Mark's spine. I've been looking forward to this opportunity to get to know you both better. Lucy stepped forward, her smile radiant and her movements graceful. The pleasure is ours, William. Your island is simply stunning. She paused, a hint of mischief dancing in her eyes. I must confess, I'm quite eager to explore every inch of it. William's gaze lingered on Lucy for a heartbeat too long, and Mark felt a familiar pang of jealousy tighten in his chest. Yet he pushed the feeling aside, reminding himself that this was a professional engagement and he needed to maintain his composure. Well then, let me give you the grand tour, William said, gesturing towards the villa. Your suite is ready, and I've taken the liberty of stocking the fridge with your favourite beverages. As they followed William into the villa, Mark couldn't shake the sense that he was being drawn into a world he had no true understanding of, a gilded cage of wealth, power, and potential temptation. The tour of the villa was a dizzying display of opulence, from the sprawling living areas with their floor-to-ceiling windows, to the private gym and infinity pool that seemed to blend seamlessly with the azure waters of the Caribbean. Mark found himself increasingly overwhelmed, his mind struggling to reconcile the grandeur of their surroundings with the modest comforts of his own life. And this, William said, leading them to a set of double doors at the far end of the villa, is where the magic happens. My private study, the nerve centre of my little island kingdom, if you will. He pushed open the doors, revealing a spacious, elegantly appointed room, its walls lined with floor-to-ceiling bookshelves and a massive, ornately carved desk commanding the centre of the space. Please, make yourselves at home, William said gesturing towards a pair of plush leather armchairs. I've arranged for us to have a private meeting after you've had a chance to settle in and refresh yourselves. Mark and Lucy exchanged a glance, both sensing the shift in the atmosphere as they stepped into William's inner sanctum. The air seemed to grow heavier, thick with unspoken implications, and the undercurrent of power that William wielded with such effortless grace. We'll be ready in a few minutes. Lucy replied, her voice smooth and measured. This place is simply breathtaking, William. You must be very proud of it. 
I am, William said, his gaze lingering on Lucy for a moment longer than necessary. And I look forward to sharing it with you both. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a few matters to attend to before our meeting. As William slipped out of the study, Mark felt a palpable tension settle over the room. He turned to Lucy, his brow furrowed with unease. Did you... did you notice the way he was looking at you? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Lucy's expression softened, and she reached out to gently squeeze his hand. Mark, darling, you worry too much. William is simply being a gracious host. I'm sure it's nothing more than that. Mark nodded, but the nagging feeling of unease refused to subside. As they made their way to the suite, the weight of William's indecent proposal, the one that would surely come, hung in the air, a shadow that would loom over their entire weekend. The grand villa seemed to buzz with an electric undercurrent as Mark and Lucy made their way to their suite. The opulence and grandeur of their surroundings only heightened the tension that had crept into their relationship since William's indecent proposal. As they entered the lavishly appointed room, Lucy let out a soft sigh, her fingers trailing over the smooth, ivory-hued linens of the enormous bed. It's all so overwhelming, isn't it? I can't help but feel a bit out of our element here. Mark moved to stand beside her, his gaze sweeping over the expansive space. I know what you mean. This place is like a different world, one where the normal rules and constraints of our lives don't seem to apply. Lucy turned to him, her eyes searching his face. Mark, I want you to know that I would never do anything to jeopardize what we have. You're the most important person in my life, and my loyalty will always be to you. Her words were laden with sincerity, but Mark couldn't help but detect a hint of unease in her tone. He reached out, gently cupping her face in his hands. I know, Lucy. I trust you. It's just... He paused, struggling to find the right words. This situation with William, it has me feeling... unsettled, I suppose. Lucy nodded, her delicate fingers closing around his wrists. I understand, but we're in this together, Mark. No matter what happens this weekend, we'll face it as a team, just like we always have. Her reassurance was a balm to Mark's frayed nerves, and he pulled her into a tight embrace, inhaling the familiar, comforting scent of her hair. For a moment, the rest of the world seemed to fade away, and it was just the two of them clinging to the safety of their bond. A soft knock at the door interrupted their reverie, and a member of the villa's staff informed them that William was ready to meet with them in his study. With a shared look of apprehension, they made their way back through the lavish corridors, the weight of the impending conversation heavy in the air. As they entered the study, William greeted them with a warm smile, ushering them towards the plush leather chairs. Please, have a seat. Can I offer you a drink? A glass of wine would be lovely, thank you, Lucy replied, her tone polite but guarded. Mark nodded in agreement, his gaze sweeping the room as William poured their drinks. The bookshelves lining the walls were filled with an impressive collection, and Mark couldn't help but wonder about the stories and knowledge they contained, a stark contrast to the simple pleasures of his own life. William handed them their glasses and settled into the chair opposite them, his gaze shifting between the two of them. I must say, I'm delighted to have you both here. As I mentioned, I've been looking forward to this opportunity to get to know you better. Mark cleared his throat, his fingers tightening around the stem of his wine glass. We're honoured to be here, William. Your island is truly remarkable. Ah, yes, my little slice of paradise, William mused, a hint of pride in his voice. But enough about the setting. I'm much more interested in the two of you. His gaze settled on Lucy, a subtle intensity in his eyes. Tell me, Lucy, what do you enjoy most about your work with our company? Lucy's posture straightened slightly, and Mark could see the wheels turning in her mind as she considered her response. Well, I find great satisfaction in being able to connect with our clients on a personal level and advocate for their needs. It's a delicate balance, but one that I've come to excel at over the years. William nodded, his lips curving into a faint smile. I can certainly attest to your exceptional customer service skills. In fact, that's one of the reasons I've been so eager to have you and Mark here this weekend. The implication in his words was not lost on Mark, and he felt a familiar prickle of unease creep up the back of his neck. You've been eager to have us here? 
he asked, his voice betraying a hint of suspicion. William's gaze shifted to Mark, and for a moment the younger man felt the full weight of the older man's scrutiny. Yes, indeed. You see, I've been considering a rather unique opportunity, and I believe the two of you might be the perfect fit. Mark felt Lucy's hand slip into his, her grip tightening ever so slightly. He could sense the tension radiating from her, and he knew that she too was bracing for what was to come. And what kind of opportunity would that be, exactly? Mark asked, his voice measured and calm. William leaned back in his chair, swirling the amber liquid in his glass. Well, as you know, I'm a rather private individual. I value my time and my space, and I've found that the usual social engagements can be tiresome at times. He paused, his gaze shifting between the two of them. However, I've come to realize that I'm missing a certain connection, a spark, if you will, and I believe the two of you might be able to provide that for me. Mark's heart pounded in his chest, and he could feel the blood rushing in his ears. He knew exactly where this was going, and the very thought of it made his stomach churn with dread. William, I'm not sure I understand what you're proposing, Lucy interjected, her voice soft but firm. The older man leaned forward, his eyes gleaming with a hint of mischief. My dear Lucy, what I'm proposing is this. I would like to offer you a substantial sum of money to spend the weekend with me, away from your husband. The words hung in the air, thick and heavy, as Mark and Lucy stared at William, both frozen in a moment of stunned silence. Mark could feel the world crashing down around him, his worst fears suddenly becoming a terrifying reality. He tightened his grip on Lucy's hand, as if his touch alone could anchor them both to the steadiness of their marriage. Lucy's expression was unreadable, her features a mask of composure, but Mark could see the wheels turning, the gears of her mind processing the implications of William's proposal. I... I don't know what to say, she finally murmured, her voice barely above a whisper. William leaned back in his chair, a self-assured smile playing on his lips. Take your time, my dear. This is a rather unique opportunity, and I understand the gravity of the decision. Mark felt the weight of William's gaze upon him, and he knew that the older man was studying his reaction, gauging the depth of his reaction to the proposal. In that moment, Mark realized that they were not simply guests in William's gilded paradise. They were unwitting players in a twisted game where the stakes were higher than they could have ever imagined. The weight of William's indecent proposal hung in the air, thick and suffocating, as Mark and Lucy sat in stunned silence. Mark's mind raced, struggling to process the implications of what the older man was suggesting, the idea of his wife, his most cherished companion, being intimate with another man in exchange for money. He turned to Lucy, searching her face for any sign of her reaction, but her expression remained carefully neutral, her fingers still intertwined with his own. Mark felt a surge of protectiveness wash over him, the urge to shield her from this twisted game that William was orchestrating. This is... An unexpected proposition, William, Lucy finally said, her voice measured and composed. I'm not sure I feel comfortable even considering such an arrangement. William leaned back in his chair, his lips curving into a faint, almost indulgent smile. My dear, I understand your hesitation. This is not a decision to be made lightly, but I assure you the financial reward would be more than worth your time. Mark's grip on Lucy's hand tightened, and he could feel his pulse pounding in his ears. With all due respect, William, I don't believe my wife is for sale. This is completely unacceptable. The older man's gaze shifted to Mark, his expression unreadable. Mark, my friend, I don't mean to offend. I simply believe in being direct about my desires, and I find you and Lucy to be a most intriguing pair. The way William emphasized the word pair sent a shiver down Mark's spine, and he suddenly felt as if they were the prey, trapped in the gilded cage of the older man's private island. "'William, I'm afraid I must decline your offer,' Lucy said, her voice unwavering. "'My loyalty lies with my husband, and I have no intention of betraying that trust, no matter the financial incentive.' Mark felt a surge of pride at her words, but the nagging fear that had taken root in his mind refused to subside. He knew that William was a man of considerable power and influence, and he couldn't shake the feeling that this was far from over. I see, William murmured, 
his gaze drifting towards the window where the azure waters of the Caribbean glimmered in the afternoon sun. Well, I certainly respect your decision, Lucy, and I hope you'll both reconsider over the course of the weekend. After all, we have plenty of time to explore the possibilities. The implication in his words was not lost on either Mark or Lucy, and they both felt the tension in the room ratchet up several notches. As they made their way back to their suite, the weight of what had just transpired seemed to press down on them, a palpable cloud of unease and uncertainty. Mark, I... Lucy began, her voice laced with a rare hint of vulnerability. I'm so sorry you had to hear that. I never imagined William would make such an indecent proposal. Mark pulled her into his arms, savouring the familiar warmth of her embrace. It's not your fault, Lucy. I know you would never betray our marriage, but I can't help but feel unsettled by all of this. She nodded against his chest, her fingers tracing the familiar lines of his shirt. I know, darling, and I promise I have no intention of entertaining William's offer. My loyalty is to you and you alone. Mark pressed a gentle kiss to the top of her head, taking solace in the steadiness of their bond. Yet even as he held her close, he couldn't shake the nagging sense of unease that had taken root in his mind. As the afternoon wore on, the couple found themselves drawn into the web of activity that William had orchestrated for his guests. They attended a lavish poolside luncheon where they were introduced to the other members of their party, a diverse group of businessmen, socialites and industry luminaries, all drawn to William's private island oasis. Mark couldn't help but feel out of place, his simple suit and tie a stark contrast to the designer swimwear and bespoke resort wear that adorned the other guests. Lucy, on the other hand, seemed to effortlessly navigate the social dynamics, her radiant smile and graceful charm winning her the admiration of those around her. It was during one of these social gatherings that Mark first encountered Charlotte, the stunning brunette who had been introduced as a close friend of William's. She moved with a confidence and allure that was hard to ignore, and Mark found himself repeatedly drawn to her magnetic presence. As they made small talk by the pool, Mark couldn't help but notice the way Charlotte's gaze seemed to linger on him, her eyes sparkling with a hint of mischief. There was an undercurrent of tension between them, a subtle charge that crackled in the humid Caribbean air. "'You seem a bit out of your element here, Mark,' Charlotte observed, her voice low and sultry. "'Not used to the trappings of wealth and privilege, are you?' Mark felt a flush of embarrassment creep up the back of his neck, but he refused to let it show. I suppose not. This world is quite different from the one I'm accustomed to. Charlotte leaned in closer, her fingers trailing lightly along his arm. Well, perhaps you need a guide. Someone to show you the, shall we say, hidden delights of this island paradise. The implication in her words was unmistakable, and Mark felt a familiar pang of guilt and uncertainty. He glanced around, searching for Lucy, only to find her engaged in conversation with William, their body language suggesting an intimacy that sent a jolt of jealousy through him. I... I don't think that would be appropriate, Mark stammered, his gaze snapping back to Charlotte. I'm a married man, and my loyalty is to my wife. Charlotte's lips curved into a coy smile, and she leaned in even closer, her breath tickling his ear. Ah... But William's proposal to Lucy suggests that the rules of fidelity may not apply here. Perhaps you and I could explore the boundaries of what's appropriate. Mark felt his heart pounding in his chest, the weight of William's indecent proposal and Charlotte's seductive overtures creating a maelstrom of conflicting emotions. He knew he needed to extricate himself from this situation to remove himself from the tangled web of temptation and moral compromise that threatened to ensnare him. As he made his excuses and hurried away from Charlotte, Mark knew that the true test of his character was just beginning. The weekend on William's private island had become a crucible, one that would force him to confront the limits of his moral compass and the true nature of the people around him. With a deep, steadying breath, Mark steeled himself for the challenges that lay ahead, determined to navigate this treacherous landscape and protect the sanctity of his marriage no matter the cost.